to you by Sayaka. Cooking with electricity is now so affordable with the Fumba tariff set by the Electricity Regulatory Authority. It is the 28th day of October 2022. Welcome on board. It is a news tonight coming your way for this particular hour. My name is Sandra Kahunde, and I'm going to be joined by Muhammad Mugalu for the Sign Language Interpretation. Proud to be here to serve you. As we start off this newscast, a look at the headlines. President Museveni calls for Africa integration to address its challenges. A second ESCG conference closes. Government dispatches food aid to Ebola hit Kassanda and the Mobenda districts. African women are judges call for increased vigilance against SGBV human trafficking. And finally, Olympic and world champion Joshua Jiptege becomes ambassador for Admin Football Club. Proud to be here to bring in news coming through for this particular hour, the 10 p.m. on News Tonight edition. We are live both online and on air. My name is Sandra Kehonde once again. And of course, uh, to serve you better, I'm being joined by Mohamed Mugalu for the Sign Language Interpretation. Now, starting off this newscast, uh, looking at the, pres uh, the, the president's activities, uh, President Yowari Kaguta Museveni has expressed the need uh, to address the challenges affecting Africa through regional integration. Uh, the president uh, communicated this during the closure of a three-day East African Court of Justice conference held right here in Kampala. The second East African Court of Justice Judicial Conference that brought together representatives from East African community partner states Friday ended here in Kampala. The closure of the conference was officiated by the President of Uganda, His Excellency Junior Urika Gutam Seven. President Museveni reiterated the need for integration if member states start to address the challenges that affect them. Buy my beef, buy my bananas, the market, integrating the market. Then we can add other things slowly, 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 but carefully. If you mishandle integration, it can backfire. I think this is really both in your area and in my area. It is both an issue of strategy but also an issue of legality. We are fragmented in effort. That's why we cannot sort of small problems like uh, Somalia, this uh, Congo here, DRC, these are small problems. They are not big problems. But if you don't act together, what is small becomes big. President Museven added that judiciary should be keen on issues in regard to land dispute. Which are the matters that should be for integration and which are the ones which should remain local. I don't think land should, be, should ever be a federal matter because that will divert us, will cause unnecessary arguments. It should always remain either a state matter or even in our cases it is a district matter. The President of East African Court of Justice, Honorable Nestroy Kayobere, expressed the need to expand the budget allocation of the East African Court of Justice. It is indeed, indeed regrettable that there has been delay in establishing and operationalizing the court's administration and financial autonomy of the court, even after the respect bill has been adopted by the Council of Ministers in the past six years. The Chief Justice of Uganda, Alfonso Winyidolo, says there is need to have a robust judiciary, which we hope in bringing justice closer to the people. An effective judiciary, the East African Court of Justice, to ensure that it can effectively exercise its mandate of interpreting the community treaty and ensuring that the rule of law prevails. In attendance where other delegates 
including the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs, Nobati Mao, and the Minister for East African Affairs, Rebecca Alituala Kadaga. And we are very looking forward to the increased mandate, which will enable the court now to arbitrate on issues of the customs union and the common market protocol, which is the core of our uh, collaboration. When we talk about equality in the constitution, it should be about equality of opportunity to stay alive. A country that cannot immunize its babies cannot be said to be providing equality of opportunity. A country that cannot provide health services and food security cannot be said to be providing equality of opportunity or even the right to life while making your decisions. Don't forget about our context, the historical conditions, our traditions are also very important. The East African Court of Justice is expected to hold court sessions from 2nd November to 1st December 2022 to hear and deliver judgments in cases filed by people from the East African community member states. The member states include Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, Burundi, Rwanda, South Sudan and Democratic Republic of Congo, Deborah Namamonde, Dan Lugemoa, UBC News. Now more from state, President Museveni has expressed the need to retool the desert, a locust control organization for Eastern Africa, with new technologies to effectively get rid of a desert locust swarms that pose a severe threat to agriculture, our best livelihoods in East Africa. While speaking to the Council of Ministers of the Desert a Locust a Control Organization for Eastern Africa, who called on him at State House Lodge and Nakasero, the president noted that when locusts invaded Uganda and caused havoc to residents of Otuke in northern Uganda and Karamoja in 2020, the helicopter provided to fight locusts almost failed because it could not fly at night. At the best time to spray the locusts when they are unable to fly, General Museveni said they had to involve the army, Uganda People's Defense Forces. According to the president, management of desert locusts should become a responsibility of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development in Eastern Africa in what he termed as IGAD to include a Tanzania, which is not a member, instead of creating another organization. The group was led by Honorable Fred B. Chakulaga, the Minister of State for Agriculture, who is also the first vice chairman at Desert Locusts Control East Africa Council of Ministers who are in Uganda for their 67th session and also to celebrate their 60th anniversary. He also informed the president of the financial challenges affecting the organization partly due to failure for member states to fulfill their contributions which currently totals to 2.1 million US dollars. He said of this amount Tanzania contributes 20 percent, Ethiopia 19 percent, Kenya 19 percent, Sudan 18 percent, Uganda 6 percent, South Sudan 6 percent, Eritrea 6 percent, while Djibouti also contributes 6 percent. Somalia also contributes 6 percent. On his part, President Museveni said, Uganda will pay all its arrears. Able to, to spray at night. I would do apologize for that bit, uh, that story regarding the head of state. Now, moving on, government has uh, finally uh, dispatched of food relief uh, to Kassanda and uh, Mobanda districts, uh, which are currently under 21 days of Ebola lockdown. Now, according to Minister for ICT, uh, Dr. Chris Bariomonsi, the relief package, which includes portion and beans, uh, will mainly bail out border border operators, tax operators, and vendors who are the first line losers of the lockdown. In a televised address on 15th October 2022, President Yuri Kaguta Museveni announced a 21-day lockdown for Kassanda and Mobende districts following the surge in Ebola infections and death. Eleven days down the road, government has stepped in with a relief consignment to the affected districts. Today, 
we have dispatched food relief items to the two districts of Mubende and Kassanda. Uh, we have given if posho, beans and other supplies to help those who are gravely affected by the measures announced by the president. According to the Minister for Information, Communication, Technology and National Guidance, Dr. Chris Wayomosi, the target beneficiaries will include the following. Like the border border riders who are not earning now, the taxi drivers who are not earning now, the roadside the market vendors like the women who sell on the roadside, all those starting today are going to get relief support so they can be able to survive. So we continue to urge our people to appreciate that Ebola is a very deadly disease and follow the guidelines and the measures announced by the health workers and the Ministry of Health so that we can completely defeat it. Has been attacked by a deadly disease. Downtown Kampala, Texan bus operators are reactivating the COVID-19 SOPs to tame the Ebola spread amidst rumors of sanctioned lockdown for Kampala Metropolitan. We have seen that all our passengers who are entering in, in the bus terminal wash their hands with the soap and clean water thoroughly because that is the only way we can control the spread of Ebola disease. And secondly, we are currently undergoing an exercise of uh, sensitizing and informing you all people of Namaiba bus terminal and all those who are entering into Namaiba bus terminal to resume because there was a bit of relaxed in putting on masks and I mean and observing standard operating procedures. There are fears that we might announce a lockdown for people of Kampara. For now, we have not taken a decision to lock down the Kampara, but we continue to urge all Ugandans in the Kampala and outside the Kampala to take precaution. We did advise that we should stop shaking of hands and where you can avoid being in body contact with another person. Take precautionary measures like washing hands and all those hygiene and safety measures that help you to avoid or prevent that, that risk of getting Infected. Minister Dr. Chris Wayomosi is, however, quick to note that if the worst befalls, government will not hesitate locking down Kampala Metropolitan. Regulate the numbers who access some of these buildings so that the, you avoid the congestion. Otherwise, if you do not know, you don't do this, then you will be attracting possibilities of lockdown, which, in all fairness, we wouldn't want to impose because we have gone through it under COVID. We know how disruptive it can be. People are recovering from the effects of COVID and the containment measures. So that should be a last resort. But we want people to cooperate. For inter-border transporters and passengers from Uganda, especially within the East African region, surveillance and adherence to Ebola SOPs has been beefed up. They are asked the IRS status by checking them again to see if they are having any signs and symptoms of Ebola. Robert Nyango, UBC News. Now getting to other updates of the day, uh, women judges across Africa have cited the need for government aims in their respective uh, regions uh, to work together to gap uh, the increased rate of human trafficking and gender-based violence cases. Uh, this was communicated uh, during the closure of a three-day international women judges of Africa Region Conference in uh, Munyonyo, Kampala. Regions have undergone a three-day conference, networking, socializing and generating ideas on how best justice can be delivered to people in their respective regions, most especially on gender-based violence and human trafficking cases. <laughs> During the closure of the conference, women judges cited the need for Africa to exclusively focus on tackling the case backlog of gender-based violence and human trafficking cases that are on a rise. We also even use intermediaries where the children are not able to communicate to their courts and the New Children's Act has brought in much protection, including um, encouraging the county governments to establish uh, safety homes in every county. These are meant to secure the 
victims. Participants are optimistic that the conference will be a turning point in extending justice to people in Africa. Because this is one of the ways in which women and girls are really um, suffering. They are not getting uh, justice. Many of them are taken to uh, traffic to go and work out of the country and when they go there their passports are taken away and they are left at the mercy of the people who took them there. Among other issues and proposals raised in the conference, the participants recommended on how best justice can be transformed in Africa. Our, our, our final document, we called it the Kampala Dec Declaration and in this declaration we, re we resolved to improve justice delivery, gender justice delivery in a number of areas that is sexual and gender based violence, youth justice, uh, uh, protection, rights of the child, protection of rights, rights of the child, justice delivery. Interagency training. It has worked very well in Kenya so that when you move, the court is not moving alone, you are moving with the prosecution, you are moving with the investigators, and it makes work easier. When the victim is not identified at the police station, it's easier to do this all the way. The 17th International Women Judges Conference of Africa region was held under the theme Breaking Barriers to Equal Justice and Strengthening Institutions. Rebecca Nantongo, Susan Nabugude, UBC News. Minister of Information, Communication and Technology, Dr. Chris Abariomonzi, has asked the new board of Posta Uganda to come up with innovations in the services offered to compete with the existing parties. Abariomonzi made the remarks at the inauguration of Posta Uganda new board members in Kampala and promised to clear all arrears of retired officers. He says Posta Uganda must be transformed into a service center for Ugandans to access services without coming to Kampala. Situated in the heart of Kampala, Posta Uganda has attracted the attention of the Information Ministry to transit the old structures to a modern facility. This has been disclosed by the Minister for Information, Communication, Technology and National Guidance, Chris Baliomonsi, at the inauguration of new board members of Posta Uganda in Kampala. Staff are expecting delivery from the board. So what, to answer you directly, is Management has put down what is key for transformation. What we expect is that the board will quickly analyze them, approve them, and then guide management in implementation of those initiatives that will lead to modernization. But the key one of all is digitization. We want a modern digital post office. But you must ask the newly elected board of Posta Uganda to adapt to new postal services because technology has changed the landscape of delivering messages. We would want postal services to adopt technology, e-services, to digitize so that we can still communicate and deliver messages through digital and virtual systems. So all over the world, uh, postal services have been affected by changes in technology but they have all adjusted to suit into a new environment and they are going and they are going strong. He promised to lobby for instructions for Posta Uganda to deliver government materials and urged them to demonstrate that they can do it effectively. But the infrastructure is old because there are all the buildings which we are going to support by way of modernizing them into modern structures but the most importantly we would want to diversify the service rendered through these offices by turning them into service centers of government where people can apply for different documents through these offices and then they receive them. For instance, if somebody is from Kisoro and wants to get a passport, why should that person first come to Kampala? He could go to the post office in Kabale. State Minister for Information, Communication and Technology, Godfrey Kavianga, says the new board was purposely selected to add value to Posta Uganda, but stressed the need for more service centers. We want all our agencies to catch up with the fever of digital acceleration. And uh, this new board was selected it carefully to assure they really move Posta 
to that milestone. And uh, you know now, uh, people are not sending letters the way they used to send them. You can now send letters uh, virtually, uh, but now we have also diversified. Because even the poster itself has come out of those boxes which are on walls to virtual boxes. Minister of State for ICT, Joyce Sebuguao, says the new board must focus on being job creators for more job opportunities. This inauguration is quite timely as we look forward to see and implement the new program that are ICT centered in the delivery of postal and courier services to the public. The Permanent Secretary, Minister of Information, Amina Zawede, says establishment of postal units in the country will create employment opportunities for Ugandans. To go after the last person, but also the vision is to turn Posta Uganda into a service delivery unit. What does that mean? That we want these uh, posters to turn into what they call one-stop centers. You go to a center and you're able to get your national ID from that center, your passport, your driving license, a death certificate for your loved one at your area. The seven-member new board of Posta Uganda includes Balejusa Sulaiman Chirunda as the chairperson, Beni Namugwanya Bugembe, Maska Sedres Kalenjo, Michael Nitegeka, Hussein Rubaga Kashirinji, Beatrice Rakimari, and James Alinetwe, Sudat Kaye, UBC News. Thank you, Sudat Kaye, for the report. <coughs> youth from Greater Massacre and Abukoman Sembe District have called upon fellow youth to embrace government programs in order to foster steady development and cause positive change in society. Uh, this was, was during a ceremony held in Chivinga sub-county, Abukoman Sembe District, where over 500 NUP youth leaders and supporters crossed to the ruling NRM party. Over 500 youths from National Unity Platform, NOP, in Bukoma Simbi District and Greater Massacre have crossed to the National Resistance Movement under the influence of Bashir Semakula, who is the National Resistance Movement chairperson, Bukoma Simbi South. Eliman Lubega, the National Unity Platform Youth Leader in Bukoma Simbi District, says they are willing to work with the ruling NRM party to foster development in the area. Justin Namere, senior presidential advisor on Greater Massacre Regional Affairs, says Bokoma Simbi is lacking behind because of prevailing political divisions. To see the people of Bokoma Simbi gather in happiness under the stewardship of Honorable Bashi Usemakula. I want to commend him for guiding the youth in Wokoma and Simbi. Wokoma and Simbi politics is run by young people and very dangerous at that. Bashir Samakula, the Bukoma Simbi NRM chairperson, welcomed the youth that crossed to his party and promised to work hand in hand with them to make Bukoma Simbi great. In the Bukoma Simbi district, so we have started moving until the end. So I'm promising all our people of NRM in Mkoma Simbi, I'm assuring you we are going to win this time. Because we have, what we have done this time, we have changed all youth from NUP to NRM. They have accepted. No one have, has forced them. They have done from the bottom of their heart. The ceremony was graced by different NRM party leaders and religious leaders from Greater Massacre. Robert Katamba compiled this report for UBC. Now, Moroto District Commissioner George William Opua has urged uh, the Karamajong to own government uh, projects and also appreciate education of uh, their children. While commissioning at the Malt Billion Ropa Seed Secondary School, that is in Moroto District, Bopua asked parents to embrace the value of education. Uh, the school was constructed by government uh, through Uganda Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfer Program. 
Rupa is one of the six sub-counties that make up Moroto district. It has been in no secondary school. This has been attributed to the high number of school dropouts in the area. In order to fulfill government policy to have a secondary school in every sub-county, government through the Uganda Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfer, UGIFT, constructed Rupa Seed Secondary School in Rupa sub-county, Moroto district. Moroto district engineer Caesar Orup says... The project that was started in 2020 with six facilities cost about 1.9 billion shillings. And the cost of 1,944,515,552. District Education Officer Paul Oputa applauded RDC Wapua for the efforts to operationalize the two secondary schools in Karamoja. By January, come January, these schools will be in operation. Uh, the teachers for this school have already been uh, appointed, but the deployment is the one which is delayed by the Ministry of Education. So we ask you also sir, to, to push up the deployment for teachers for this school. Thank you so much for our team to win it as own the property and government's building. <laughs> Nonetheless, he challenged the contractor to always meet deadlines and avoid delaying government programs. Contractors should be put on the pressure to give us quality. Rupa said secondary school is a multi-billion project under phase one of government of Uganda funding through Uganda Intergovernmental Fiscal Transfer Program. I'm Navka Farida and Moreniga. Close to 10,000 pastoralists have flocked Karamoja region in search for water and a pasture in the only Kobembe Dam and Lotus and Sub County Moroto district. The pastoralists who started flocking the region include the Mathineko of Moroto, the Jay of Kotido, Bokora of Napak, and Turukana from Kenya. Kobebe Mount Purpose Dam was constructed in 2010 by government of Uganda with a water capacity of 7 billion liters. Every dry spell, pastoralists from Karamoja sub-region and Trukana of Kenya migrate to Kobebe Dam in Lotsana sub-county Moroto district to look for water and pasture for their animals. <laughs> They trek for miles with their animals, also taking advantage of the nearby bushes for shelter. This has exerted pressure on the few social services like schools, health facilities and water sources. The transport is too high. They tell you to pay 60,000. Now, people from here are done with sickness. I'm going to watch my mom be up. 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 These people move with their children. They don't stay here. When they migrate to, maybe like now they are saying they are migrating this side of Bokora. They will go and migrate, they migrate with their women and their children. And if they want back, like the Turkana, when they go back to their, to their country, they go back with their children and their women. Due to this, leaders have called upon government and development partners to ensure social services are improved in the area. All children, they like schools, but not for after cattles only. But only the school which is what? Far from them. It's challenging. If uh, uh, basic uh, alternative basic education could still be extended to this grazing area, it would serve the interest of the people. Now that Moroto Deputy Resident Commissioner Justin Tuko urged Trukana pastorists to avoid misusing their guns, while Moroto District LC5 Chairperson David Koryang called for intervention in security. To ensure that all the guns of the Tuka remain behind. They should not even be at the border. They should be far away from the border inside Kenya. Such that their friends from Uganda, from Madeniko, from Chie, from the Karamoja region, that they always go and access the guns from that side. 
they buy so, so that they can be able not to get those kind of things. If government could take, central government could take over this road so that these people get better services. I'm Navka Farida and Maureen Iga. News tonight it is. It's time for us to make some money. You can be sure shortly after these messages, Mohamed Mugalu and I will return to give you more news for the day. So, ndi wano kubate geza, ndi MTN Kampala Marathon, eko miewo. Eranga kumulu ndi guno, tuduka kuru habana, bababi. Aa, aa, temufu na bubi, site geza buna bubebi ya busiba mundongo. No? Atera, site geza buna bubebi ya bili ya sente. Neda banange njogera kumabu jegano. Uwe gete misinde ja Eugen Kampara Marathoni. Eji naba unga avidi okwe kumi na ogumu mkumi bidi avidi mwevidi. Okwe wandisa nyika sta emu kaga tano sta msavu msavu hashi. Oba kuzesa momo apu. Did you know that women constitute majority of Uganda's population? However, the high numbers do not match the level of participation of girls and young women in sports. Some of the challenges contributing to low female participation in sports include negative cultural norms, lack of parental support, sexual harassment, gender stereotypes, and equal recognition and remuneration, among others. Everyone has a responsibility to encourage a girl or young woman join a sport of a choice, support girls or young women in active sports to excel, above all make sports safe, violence free and inclusive. This message is brought to you by the Mentoring and Empowerment Program for Young Women, MEMPRO. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get Freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart phone network welcome to friend stadium everybody's ready wait a second not everybody come on dude it's the fifa world cup you're going to lose your seat the ritual seat the lucky one losing more than a seat your team is going to lose where are you dude the match is about to start your friends won't hold out much longer excuse me excuse me finally everything is in the right place hey other hand and you, do you have everything you need to believe? My name is Charles Peter Maiga, the Katikiro of Buganda. It's very important to groom and nurture children into responsible citizens. But that doesn't mean that we've got to beat them up, got to hurt them. I think we need to groom our children into people who have self-worth. That will enable us to have citizens who will be responsible and who will also look at violence with disdain. Because a violence-free childhood is everyone's right. Raising Voices. We are live from Broadcast South, Nile Avenue. Pleasure to have your company once again. Nine more updates this Friday, the 28th of October, 22. Uh, we're seeing the Ministry of Finance, uh, Planning and Economic uh, Development are uh, launching uh, the re-implementation of the new integrated finance management uh, system, uh, geared at enhancing accountability and efficiency in the inter-transfer of funds within government agencies. State Minister for General Duties in the Ministry, Henry Musasizi, presided over the launch at Victoria Serena Hotel, Tigo, this morning. The Minister is uh, cutting the ribbon to 
uh, single commissioning of the uh, okay, please put your hands together since 2003, the Minister of Finance, Planning and Economic Development has been implementing the electronic funds transfer system to enhance efficiency and accountability in the public sector. However, with some challenges like cases of cyber security, low motivation of staff and inadequate and unreliable information technology infrastructure, among others, Having identified the challenges and solutions to the first phase of the system implementation, the Ministry Friday morning launched the re-implementation of the new integrated financial management system to ensure effective delivery of public services. The State Minister for General Duties in the Ministry of Finance, Henry Mustachizi, and the Permanent Secretary, Stroke Secretary to the Treasury, Lamathan Gobi, highlighted some of the benefits of the new launched system. Of systems helps government to generate more accurate and timely financial information, thus directly contributing to improvements in the accountability, transparency, and combating corruption. The upgraded system is officially being launched at a time when we are also aligning our budgeting system, our budgeting processes, the program-based budgeting. Team of experts led by the Accountant General Lawrence Semakula worked out the technical details which culminated into the new system. I said earlier, we, we, we do a continuous misfunctional training program that ensures that all users are equipped with skills effectively to carry out their duties on the system. So far, a total of 395 agencies, including local governments, have been integrated into the new system. The COVID-19 pandemic was also identified as one of the challenges which affected the effective implementation of the first phase of the system. Edward Colin Juko for UBC. Moving on, a number of government-aided secondary schools have started implementing the new curriculum by visiting different cultural sites and museums to preview the sources of historical data for ads a subject. The deputy head teacher Kololo High School, Hakim, says the tour will enable learners to improve on their academic performance after engaging in practical lessons in the field. <laughs> The Minister of Education and Sports through the National Curriculum Development Center started the implementation of a new ordinary level curriculum to bring changes to some of its outdated to and contentious practices. In order to successfully and practically achieve the objectives of the new curriculum, government-aided schools have started showing significant progress and achievements by impacting learners with skills and attitudes to situations they daily. The question is asked today, my children, my students shall just write and can always pass. So I thank the Minister of Education and Sports for organizing a new curriculum and this new curriculum is practical as compared to the already curriculum. Deputy Head Teacher Kolo High School, Sevilla Akim says the new curriculum is competence based and sex to promote entrepreneurship as a means of equipping learners with the skills through previewing the sources of historical data and state culture. As a teacher of history, we have seen all the sources of history and if an examination is said, my learner here can easily make a flashback and write an examination and can easily pass. Lower level students from government aided schools expressed their positive views and experiences and thanked the government of Uganda for this initiative. Our curriculum says Nija has helped us to view the early things, the historical things that have left in. And really, uh, it's really a wonderful session. I've been studying history since P4. Up to here I'm in S5, but really, I've seen everything. I was, I was using theory to answer the papers, but right now I'm seeing everything practically. Robert Katamba, UBC News.
Pupils and teachers have been encouraged and to not to engage in any form of, the, of examination malpractice and indiscipline as they prepare for the primary leaving examinations. Uh, the primary leaving examinations, that is PLE, are scheduled to start with a briefing on November 7, 2022, after two years of lockdown as the country struggled to curb the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Ebenezer Primary School, Kisugu, is among the many schools that have prepared their pupils to sit for the examinations next month after the past two years when the country was experiencing a lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic and schools closed. We are prepared. During COVID, we made notes and we were online. And those who couldn't uh, on, uh, you know, be online, they were given work. And we are well to go. Our children are well prepared. Our children, incidentally, we are a Christian school. We instill discipline and values in our children, so we don't expect any more practice. We may call it a transformation. This is the, the, the class that had lost because of, of lockdown. So they spent more time in primary, but we are hopeful because the teachers have done to their best. We have tried to uh, prepare the candidates emotionally, physically, academically, religiously, I can say, because uh, the teachers have completed and covered the syllabus in time. We have given them time to read and reflect on their own. So we are really hopeful that these children will do to their best. The teachers are optimistic since they have offered the necessary learning tools as well as psychosocial support to candidates during their time remaining for effective preparation. Everything will change, the infrastructure will change, the method mostly, the, most, the, the mode of teaching, how we deliver our, our content because it's going to be child-centered, it's going to be, you know, interesting and uh, we are going to have it is called profound learning we've already established the culture and we've already got materials and teachers from master academy canada who have been helping us out as a beneza we are introducing in what we call prof profound learning and profound learning uh, we are partnering with uh, canadians and uh, we have already started implementing this. So we shall be the first school in Uganda to implement the Canadian uh, uh, curriculum, which we shall integrate it with the one that we have, because its aim is also to transfer, transfer learning ownership from the teacher to the learners. We, are, we train children who know what to do, not thinking that it is the teacher who knows. The children themselves or the learners can also teach you what you don't know. Take an example, there are children who know how to cycle, there are those who know how to write, there are those ones who know uh, computer very well than you, the teacher. So it is wrong to say that you know it all. This was revealed during a dedication service that was celebrated at the school premises together with their parents and the school administration. Sandra Kahunde, UBC News. Well, we wish the candidates all the best as they prepare to sit their examinations. Now, away from schools, authorities in Mbale have embarked on programs to relocate all residents settled in wetlands, especially uh, those along the riverbanks of the recently flooded uh, Nawayunga River. According to Mbale City Resident uh, Commissioner Ahmada Washaki, the exercise is in fulfillment of the presidential directive to protect wetland areas and preserve the environment. In a bid to protect and conserve the environment, but also save lives of Ugandans, Mbale City Authority is set to relocate all people living in wetlands and riverbanks. The plan intended to conserve the environment is in fulfillment of the presidential directive, and this has been led by the office of the resident city commissioner. The environmental police is going to assist us in enforcing the directives of the president in relation to environment. If they say you should not work in the wetland and when you are found there, police will be guiding you and advising you to go out. Whoever resists shall be brought to the boat. However, 
government has a commitment that for those who will be shifting from where they are established homes in wetlands to go to safer areas or mountains to go to safer areas, there is support government is going to give. But the better thing is to begin now to vacate those places to protect life. The director followed the July August flash floods that claimed over 30 lives destroyed property and displaced many. The recent lands were attributed to the de depletion of the environment, especially rivers, that led to the overflow. This disaster here is, is human made. The way we don't protect our envir environment is what is causing us these drast dr drastic d disasters. Especially those who pollute the, the, the waters. They, brought, they bring all types of garbage from out and put them in the river. It causes uh, silting, eventually uh, raises levels of water and also uh, causes damages. While handing over support to residents that were affected by the floods in Kichafo Cell, Northern City Division, the RCC commented all well wishes for the noble support. Yeah, today we have been graced with uh, some, some support to, to people who, are, who, dis who suffered into the disaster, uh, brought by Moobs, Mbale Branch, Stanbeek, Wash and Wheels, Punta Kana, uh, Chidawalime, who graced us with the uh, uh, support here. I want to thank them on behalf of the government and also condole with those people who lost theirs and also who suffered in this disaster. Team lead of the campaign to support the flood victims is Omulangira Martin Juko. He urges them to vacate disaster prone areas for their own good. <laughs> In other news, a refugee women and those in the host communities in BDBD settlement, Yumbe district, have called upon government and development partners to support skills training and functional adult literacy among women. Jacqueline Ayonzu, a 21-year-old refugee in a BDBD settlement who got crippled after the death of her father while she was in primary five, is one of those whose hopes are enshrined in skilling. In 2017, Caritas Uganda came up with a skills training for women in a BDBD settlement, a training that Jacqueline Ayozu and her colleagues benefited from skills training like chalk, soap, and shoemaking. The skilling program has seen at least 900 refugee women and women from host community in Yumbe, supported by Caritas Uganda, graduating in different skills. Caritas gave me the knowledge the trainers and making chokes. As I can speak now, I'll make chokes and I'll do business in chalk making. Then Highland in secondary school and Alaba primary. Also these days they could come and buy chokes from us for group discussions. So I am one of the participants in soap production. I am a single mother and I had nothing to do. But now when uh, characters came with the program, I, I happen to be one of them. The beneficiaries of the program have attained different skills and adult literacy and are now able to earn income to support their livelihood. This was possible thanks to a self-reliance project funded by the Royal Norwegian Embassy. The more women, they need that support, they need that knowledge. It's so my cry to your side, lobby for more and support our women. And that's the knowledge that we can cross with the border back to South Sudan. The National Director of Caritas Uganda, Dr. Francis Ndamira, says Caritas is committed to help build capacity of refugees and members of the host communities. Our humanitarian program is aiming at empowering the community to work and innovate activities of food production and skilling all various talents as a must for, is a must for us. We thank the Uganda government for creating an evading conducive peaceful environment to do this for its citizens and refugees. But you are here peaceful. Don't you plan for clap for the government, please?
The commandant of BDBD settlement, Michael Joel Nabugere, challenged beneficiaries to make use of the skills to earn a living. We are at a time, uh, a hard time, where we see that the humanitarian support is reducing. There are wars across the world that are taking or sharing the humanitarian funds. But also the amount of food that was given or that is being given this month has been reduced to an, around 40%. The success in education is not the certificate or the paper that you get, but rather what you are able to do with skills that you get out of this education. Joseph Odama, UBC News in Yumbe. MDN joins the people of Keralur to celebrate the 12th coronation anniversary of the King of Keralur, His Royal Majesty Ubim Philip Rauni III in October. At MTN, we believe that we only succeed if the communities in which we operate succeed. And so, we're happy to join the people and well wishes of the people of Keralur in promoting social cultural programs of the Ubim. Walegu Mugisa ni Ubimu ku Keralur. The Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We, however, urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes, and mouth. Please inform the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms. To prevent Ebola from spreading further, please take the following preventive measures. Regular washing of hands with water and soap, avoid handshaking and hugging, avoiding any contact with any suspected Ebola patients. Any person who dies suddenly should not be buried but reported to the nearest health worker or LC1 immediately. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800 -1 000066 or send a free SMS to your report on 8500. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and World Health Organization. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or give. Get freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smart smartphone network. I see a mighty move of the Holy Ghost in Uganda in 2022. Revival, restoration, reconciliation is here as Uganda celebrates 60 years. This is the year 2022. The revival, restoration, renewal, and a great visitation. You're therefore invited to a great Lord's Visitation Crusade and Fire Conference at Nejiruboa, NSSF Grounds from 30th October to 6th November 2022. The Fire Conference starts at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The Great Crusade starts at 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. We have great preachers led by evangelist Randy Roberts, Jennifer Wyatt, Reverend Dr. Robert Ampere Coffee from Ghana, and many national preachers. Revival is here. News tonight it is. Thank you so much for joining us for the business segment. Now taking you straight, straight into the details of the day uh, when it comes to the business updates. Uh, in a bid to curb up counterfeit products, uh, the Uganda Registration Service Bureau has embarked on training for agro-input dealers. Uh, these have been equipped with knowledge on the importance of registering their businesses as well as the dangers of having counterfeit products on the market. 
Agriculture accounts for the largest share of Uganda's export earnings and its gross domestic product, as well as providing the main source of income for the vast majority of the population. However, Uganda has faced numerous bans on its exports to other countries due to poor quality standards. To overcome these challenges, Uganda Registration Service Bureau has now undertaken to train agro-input dealers as one way of combating counterfeit in agro-products. Cases where our uh, produce, for example, maize, eggs, milk, beef is rejected, very soon Uganda will fail to export anything if we continue using counterfeits because the world is becoming very conscious about health, uh, people are looking for toxins in foods and so on, and since we have a comparative advantage in agriculture. We are destroying our comparative advantage by contaminating our food with dangerous substances, with counterfeits. Experts say all stakeholders should be alerted about the corrosive effects of counterfeit products on both environment and human health. We all know the, the, how we are having a prevalence of uh, cancerous diseases. We all know how it is uh, affecting even our public uh, safety, uh, schools getting burnt and all these other issues because you don't know the effect of buying a substandard and counterfeit product on you maybe later until uh, you have used this product and seen the consequences that are, are rather dangerous. However, the penalties that go with counterfeiters are weak. Hence, do not help in curbing the vice from the public. There are a number of laws that exist on counterfeits. The only problem that exists is that the penalties are very low. If I can use one that has just been uh, talked about, that if somebody is caught counterfeiting a brand, for example, um, weed master and weed mister, the, the, the fine is 2.5 million. But the person whom you are going to catch with weed mister will have a 40 foot container of weed mister. What is 2.5 million? He will pay it and still go back. It doesn't matter whether I catch him 10 times, he will still pay it. So the laws exist, but unfortunately those laws still have very low penalties. So he's saying they either give you five years, but the, the, the courts will always opt for, the, for you to pay the penalty. And it's still low. They are, they are gaining a lot from counterfeits. Those penalties should really, really be increased. Mary Namkose, UBC News. Thank you, Mary. Now more from business. A limited awareness about digital security has been identified for the escalating cyber crimes in the current dynamic a digital environment. In the 2022 Digital Security Expo organized by Digital Security Alliance, stakeholders recommend special treatment of local innovation and training them on personal data protection and privacy regulations. The trend of developing digital solutions and consumption without necessary precautions is exposing personal data to potential cyber threats. There is a knowledge gap. People do not know what exists and for what purpose. And unless you take deliberate intention to create awareness, to train them about the application, some digital applications contain injustices in the development but end up on the market for public consumption. According to Yona Wanjara, Executive Director of Defenders Protection Initiative, porously way for these innovations undermines human rights and data protection protocols. Some of the applications, some of the innovation have injustices embedded into them. And key to it is to emphasize how best can we mitigate the risks that come with some of these applications. Local innovations are faced with the challenge of limited financial access to improve invented digital solutions to meet domestic consumption. This leaves foreign platforms with a wide scope of exploitation with limited checks. The local content, the local innovation, and highlight them to our constituency who are human rights defenders. Now there are very many, some of them are outside Uganda, but they target Ugandans as an example are uh, the money lending apps. Uh, they use people's information, uh, you know, whereby if a person fails to pay, they call everyone in your phone book threatening them. Now the challenge there that we are getting is we do not know all of them. But how we can be able to get to know them and bring them under regulation, now you the users, is to complain to us. 
absence of physical location by these digital platforms limits regulators' efforts of fast tracking in instances of fraud and misuse of people's data. Some of them don't have physical premises. It becomes hard for us to enforce. Read their privacy notice. You know people just accept because they need the loan. Defenders Protection Initiative commits to partner with innovators and regulators to provide contextualized safety and security options to advance local innovations and digital security to personal data and rights. Abdul Nasser Lubama, EUBC News. News tonight, it is. We are live from Broadcast House, Nile Avenue. Before we let you go, bringing you a sports update that is on the lighter note. Now, after winning almost all medals on the international scene, Olympic and world champion uh, Joshua Chiptege is keen on talent identification. Chiptege has set foot in football as a brand ambassador of Admin Football Club in Tororo. He believes that the young ones can make it just like he did in athletics if given chance. World and Olympic champion Joshua Chaptege is not only known for running at the track, but equally for his love for other sports disciplines. From building his own enduring center, Chaptege was unveiled as an ambassador for Admin Football Club. Admin Football Club, best in Tororo, was formulated in 2013 and is rebranding as a big and competitive club. Playing in the regional league, they believe they can break the ceiling this year to progress to the big league for the first time. At a fundraising dinner to set pace for the club, Chapter Gay revealed key aspects in sports that include endurance, discipline and hard work as factors that will lead not only admin football club to success, but other sports personalities as well. It's not about your location. There's a problem we cannot achieve. Uh, we cannot achieve our dreams in our country. Oh, the, the government's bad. Think about it. Is it is your mindset which is which is which is not working properly? It's about your mindset. <laughs> At a function graced by key government officials from Tororo District, including the DPC Tororo, Fred Ahimbisiwe, and Tororo District LC5 Chairman John Okea, Chapter Gay donated 5 million Uganda shillings towards the development of Admin Football Club. The club managed to collect up to 25 million Uganda shillings during the fundraising dinner and they believe they are set to compete. Admin Football Club will be hosting its games at King George Stadium in Tororo. Unveiling the five-year plan for the club, Owar Henry, the president of the club, highlighted CAF Champions League football as the ultimate goal. We have a plan to play in the Uganda Premier League as admin in the next five years and we are going to work very hard to make sure that we accomplish this mission. Then we have a plan to make sure that admin FC lifts at least a trophy within the next five years which we are working as a team to make sure that we bring this on the ground. Admin Football Club, who rebranded as a community-based club, will compete in the Uganda Cup this season and having Toro as their fan base, they believe they will compete favorably. Well, with sports, it's a wrap for this newscast. Before I let you go, a recap of the headlines once again. President Museveni calls for Africa integration to address its challenges as second ESCJ conference closes. Government dispatches food aid to Ebola hit Kasande and Mobende districts. African women judges call for increased vigilance against SGBV human trafficking. And to wrap it up, Olympic and world champion Joshua Kiptege becomes ambassador for Admin Football Club.
Well, those are some of the highlights for today's activities, the 28th of October, 2022. So it was a pleasure spending time with you. You make the right decision every time you choose a national broadcaster, and we're proud to serve you. My name is Sandra Kehunde, and to serve you better, I was joined by Mohamed Mugalu for the sign language interpretation from the entire team behind the scene. Wish you a beautiful night, and of course, a fruitful weekend ahead. Keep watching UBC. It's Freaky Friday from Airtel. Buy or gift. Buy or gift. Get Freaky too. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to load a Freaky Friday bundle for you to enjoy the best offers on voice and data. To buy a bundle for friends and family, dial star 149 star 10 star 5 hash. Freaky Friday with Airtel. Buy or gift a bundle today. Dial star 149 star 10 hash to get started. Airtel, the smartphone. Phone network. I see a mighty move of the Holy Ghost in Uganda in 2022. Revival, restoration, reconciliation is here as Uganda celebrates 60 years. This is the year 2022. The revival, restoration, renewal, and a great visitation. You're therefore invited to a great Lord's Visitation Crusade and Fire Conference at Negiruboa, NSSF Grounds from 30th October to 6th November 2022. The Fire Conference starts at 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. The Great Crusade starts at 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. We have great preachers led by evangelists, Randy Rubin.